man, we got pounded with snow. It was awesome. Um, just, just a reminder on these um, blankets right here, right? These, these cool blankets, waterproof. Um, you know, I'll put the link again for, for uh, the Liberty Blanket Company and Greg who had, had these come in late. And I'm trying to help them, you know, push them out. Um, that they're not, they're not the, a cheap blanket. They're about a hundred bucks with the discount. So I, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but, uh, Liberty Blanket Company, these are, uh, waterproof, windproof, and insulated. And they have that pocket for your feet and there's a hook that you can hook around. So it covers you. They're, they're, they're pretty cool. So uh, room for two in there, um, and then if you, or you, you know, if you really want to have your own, then they're, they're, they're awesome. So I'll put the link again. Uh, I did it on my last video. I'll put a link again. I'm not making anything on these guys. This isn't, I'm just, I'm just trying to help out a fellow cow, you know, get, uh, get some things going. Okay. Um, this is really some interesting things have, have been happening. First off, got to go to a funeral of a friend today. Um, wasn't that a Elton John, uh, like an organ funeral for a friend? Wasn't, wasn't that back in the seventies? Wasn't there a song like that? And it was like a real pipe organ sounding, I believe. I'll have to look into that again. Funeral for a friend. Anyway, funeral of a friend. And it, it and he, he'd had some health issues, so so I, I'm not pointing my finger to, to anything. But have you noticed how you have you noticed how many young people? Um, so so I look at ce celebrities as kind of like black sheep, and and not well they they could be black sheep, but but I look at them. So my dad herded sheep as a boy, and you'd have so many black sheep. And black sheep would, they would be your counters. So <clears throat> you might have, you know, one black sheep per 30 sheep or something like that. And, and so you just count your black sheep to make sure that, that you had everything. And it was just a quick count, right? Um, so if you had five black sheep or six black sheep or 10 black sheep, um, you could immediately identify them and then you're probably safe in that, that you, you have all your sheep. That, that's kind of how you do it. Well, I look at these celebrities as kind of black sheep in that way. There's so many that, and, and by celebrities, just people that, uh, they, they might not be, you know, Hollywood or even the music industry, but like, like the guy, the reporter for the soccer, young guy. Um, there were actually two reporters just drop over dead. Um, a football, a football coach, 61 drops over dead, uh, uh, college football. I think it was Texas tech and he had BYU ties and all that. It, it just go on and on. It's almost every week, every week. And I personally know a lot of younger people that are, and it's almost like we don't even really think much about it. It's like, yeah, yeah. Lucky them, you know, kind of thing. Um, but certainly um, heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching for, for those that are left behind because it's usually a surprise. It's usually from people that don't have, you know, issues and they just, they just die. Um, anyway, it's something to think about. Uh, I... You probably know my thoughts on it, but I'll let it go at that. Okay, another another really um, fascinating aspect uh, of, of what we're going through in this country, the United States of America, uh, and combining it with what we studied this last year, particularly these, these you know, from about 700 B.C., on to the to the end of of the Old Testament, um, we look at our southern border in the United States of America, 
and it's an absolute disaster in my opinion. Um, there, we're being invaded. Now, I know this touches the heartstrings of a lot of people, and I know that there are good people coming across the border, uh, and hopefully in the next few minutes, I'll be able to convey that I'm not against good people coming here, and I'm not against um, immigration. I'm not against anything like that. But but we do have to go, we have to have a scriptural basis for this, I think, to, to really understand what's going on. So if if we if we go back if we go back to to our studies this year, um, the, the the three made major occupations of of Israel uh, during the time of of uh, when the kingdom was divided, when the kingdom was divided. So, so you had, you had Saul, you had David and you had Solomon when the kingdom was united of Israel and you had one king and then you had Rehoboam and Jeroboam and you had the Northern and the Southern kingdom. And, and during that time period, you had these invasions, right? So the Northern kingdom was, was invaded by Assyria, um, seven, I can't remember, maybe 720 BC, something like that. Um, during the time of Isaiah, but Isaiah was in the Southern Kingdom, but he was witnessing what was going on. And they had, during that invasion, a lot of people from the Northern Kingdom went to the Southern Kingdom for protection. But those that didn't, they were captured, they were dispersed, and that's where we have our, our lost 10 tribes dispersed and and into the northern countries and actually all over but but that kingdom was was destroyed and we know why it was because of their wickedness and and Ephraim <laughs> happened to be one of the ones that conspired with Assyria and they um they were worshiping other gods and idols and all kinds of things the Canaanite gods and uh, Moloch, Baal, just, you know, it just wasn't good. And so they were ripe for destruction. They were ripe for destruction. Well, then what happens is Babylon, well, Assyria tries to attack the north or the southern kingdom, and they get, they're uh, under Hezekiah, King Hezekiah. He's a righteous king, and um, they, the, Assyria is not successful. And all their soldiers die, like 200,000 of them, some crazy thing. And uh, actually w was at that site where that happened on this last trip. It's, it's an amazing experience to read and see, you know, what, what took place here or there. So, so the Assyrian army uh, and, and the king, they go back with their tail between their legs and the king gets, I, I think it's his sons that actually kill him because he's such a disgrace. Well, then their kingdom starts to crumble and that's when the Babylonian empire comes up and they um, take over the Assyrians, which means they also take over all the the Northern kingdom basically of Israel. Uh, and then through a series, you know, a lot of people think that the Babylonians just came in and, and, and took uh, Jerusalem and, and the southern kingdom, but it was a process. And, and King Zedekiah was basically a puppet king for um, a king of Israel, a puppet king for, for King Nebuchadnezzar. And, and it, it was only after uh, uh, Zedekiah um upset king nebuchadnezzar and didn't do what he was supposed to to do as a puppet that's that's when king nebuchadnezzar just went okay i'm done i'm done with you guys so so then that's when they just lay waste and pilferage the temple and and uh, they don't completely destroy it but basically take everything out and desecrate it and everything else and then that's where you have a lot of captives 
right, taken into Babylon. That's where you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. Um, Ezekiel's involved in that. Jeremiah uh, goes to Egypt, but, but it's during that time period. Well, a little while later, the Persians attack Babylon and take over Babylon. And the Persians um, under King Cyrus and then Darius, I think. I might be pronounced. I think that's wrong, actually. Anyway, but King Cyrus is the, 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 the king that conquers the Babylons. And then he, he sees these Jewish uh, slaves and, and uh, captives. And he says, you know, you, you, we want to have a different approach here. We, we actually want to get along. We, we still want to rule you, but we want, we want to get along. And uh, so he facilitates them going back to Israel. And that's when they rebuild the temple. And that's where you have Nehemiah and Ezra and uh, um, some of the other uh, prophets that we've talked about um, right towards the end. Um, I think Habakkuk, Habakkuk, uh, I can't remember. Maybe, maybe Zephaniah too. But anyway, th those were prophets of that time period. So they rebuild the temple, right? And it's all about the temple and Zechariah, that, that time period. So an interesting thing happens that I think ties into the southern border of the United States right now. But in, in, uh, in Habakkuk, the first chapter, and in uh, Zephaniah, um, we, we have this concern of the prophets and they're like, God, how can you can use these wicked people to, uh, as, as ways to punish Israel? Um, they're a little confused or they're maybe not confused, but they're questioning how the Lord can, can actually utilize or use wickedness. And so, now look, when, when the Assyrians attacked the northern kingdom, were all the Assyrians that, that attacked, were they all wicked? Were all the ones that were in the northern kingdom wicked? No. But you can still have the wicked Assyrian, wicked Assyrians, particularly the king and the leadership, they're wicked and they're destroying wicked individuals in the northern kingdom so you still can have the wicked will punish the wicked and it's not all inclusive if that makes sense that doesn't mean that everyone that's affected by it is wicked not everyone that you could have just an obedient soldier a syrian soldier doing what his duty is and and going but he's not a wicked person okay you could have women and children not being wicked assyrians but but the country of Assyria at the time and their idol worship and all the things and, and their leadership were wicked. And so the God used the wicked to punish the wicked. Now we have a, we, um, and, and that goes on and on and on. That goes on and on and on as these occupations, uh, happen. But if you go, if you go to Mormon, uh, Go to the Book of Mormon and go to Mormon, um, where he's compiled all this. Mormon is getting old. He's been a warrior. He's seen the destruction of his people. And he, he says something here really interesting. Um, uh, this is in Mormon chapter 4. And he says... Um, and it was because the armies of the Nephites went up unto the Lamanites that they began to be smitten. For were it not for that, the Lamanites could have no power over them. But behold, the judgments of God will overtake the wicked. And it is by the wicked that the wicked are punished. Now, isn't that interesting? That's, that's basically what we read at the end of the Old Testament there, where these prophets were 
we're wondering how, how why why is the Lord using the wicked to punish the wicked? And that's this is this is this is a clear way. So, but behold, the judgments of God will overtake the wicked. So I'm in chapter four, verse five, and it is by the wicked that the wicked are punished. For it is the wicked that stir up the hearts of the children of men unto bloodshed. For it is the wicked that stir up the hearts of the children of men unto bloodshed. So that is interesting. And we'll tie in a couple of other scriptures there. Um, uh, one in Jeremiah and one in the Doctrine and Covenants. But but we remember what Alma was, was teaching um, um, Corianton. And he said, there's a law given and a punishment affixed and a repentance granted, which repentance mercy claimeth. Otherwise, justice claimeth the creature and executeth the law and the law inflicteth the punishment. Now, see, that's interesting because the law inflicts the punishment. It's not God. So these are consequences, eternal consequences of disobedience. And and that is a loving heavenly father that helps us avoid the law of punishment. The law inflicts the punishment. So, so in this uh, uh, Mormon chapter four, verse five, and it is the wicked that, um, and let's see, and it is by the wicked that the wicked are punished. So, so these are the consequences. So it's not God going, I'm going to punish you. It is in a sense because he is the law. He is the law. So in that sense, yes, but but it is the eternal laws that punish. And then and then uh, Alma continues and, and, and says, um, if not so, the works of justice would be destroyed and God would cease to be God. But God ceaseth not to be God and mercy claimeth the penitent. Mercy claimeth the penitent, and mercy cometh about because of the atonement, and the atonement bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead, and the resurrection of the dead bringeth back man into the presence of God. So you have justice and mercy, justice and mercy. This is this, this balance of the universe. It's the balance of, of the eternal balance of everything. So, so the wicked will punish the wicked. Now, let's go to Jeremiah um, and and read something very similar to that. And this is in uh, Jeremiah chapter one and verse 15. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdom of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem and against all the walls thereof round about and against all the cities of Judah. He's talking about the invasion there coming and it's the wicked to punish the wicked if you continue to read. Now let's go to Doctrine and Covenant 63 and this is even more clear. So, so we have... Old Testament, Book of Mormon, and um, Doctrine and Covenants now that that really, really, really cover this. So this is um, this is Doctrine and Covenants, section sixty three, verse thirty three. I have sworn in my wrath and decreed wars upon the face of the earth and the wicked shall slay the wicked and fear shall come upon every man and the saints also shall hardly escape. Nevertheless, I the Lord am with them and will come down in heaven from the presence of my father and consume the wicked with unquenchable fire. And behold, this is not yet but by and by. Who? Wherefore, seeing that I, the Lord, have decreed all these things upon the face of the earth, I, 
will that my saints should be assembled upon the land of Zion, and that every man should take righteousness in his hand, faithfulness upon his loins, and lift up uh, and lift a voice, a warning voice unto the inhabitants of the earth, and declare both by word and by flight that desolation shall come upon the wicked. I highly recommend section 63 in reading it on a regular basis. There is so much realism. Now, here's what's happening in the southern border. We are being invaded. And I think it's the consequences of a corrupt country. And this invasion, uh, just like any other invasion, there's good people and there's wicked people, but the wicked are gonna punish the wicked. And the wicked that are coming through that border from all kinds of different countries. And there is human trafficking. Uh, uh, and when we say human trafficking, that just kind of sounds nice <laughs> in a way. Um, it's like a s slave trade. It's bad, but it's not, you know, like people that need employment or, you know, and they, they might not make a good wage, but it's human trafficking. That's how some people think that it's human trafficking. No, we're talking sex slaves. We're talking underage uh, girls, um, boys. Um, we're talking the most heinous, gross, sickening uh, situation that's happening. And it's pouring through the Southern border. Drugs of every kind, the most, the most destructful drugs, addictive, that, that have killed thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in our country. This is all coming through, and it's in this, in my opinion, this is a this is the wicked punishing the wicked. And it's our leadership, it's the morals of our country, it's what we've turned into that are embracing this. We want cheap labor. We want votes, and so we we continue to have an open border that's open to every nasty thing. Now, having said that, there are good people that just want a life, right? And there should be a very good system to vet and a simple system, but that's not what our government wants to accomplish. They don't want to fix the problem. They don't want to fix the problem uh, because there are too many lobbyists and, and uh, 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 big businesses and, and the government itself that uh, will profit from having the chaos. And this is going to be the destruction of our, com uh, of our country. Listen to this. This, this continues. I'm, I'm going to continue to read. Um, in section 63. Um, uh, I just want to see where I want to start. I'm going to start in verse 46. And now sp speedily visit the churches, expounding these things unto them with my servant Oliver Cowdery. Behold, this is my will, obtaining monies, even as I have directed. He that is faithful and endureth shall overcome the world. He that sendeth up treasures unto the land of Zion shall receive an inheritance in this world, and his works shall follow him, and also a, re a reward in the world to come. Yea, and blessed are the dead that die in the Lord from henceforth, when the Lord shall come, and old things shall pass away, and all things become new. They shall rise from the dead and shall not die after and shall receive an inheritance before the Lord in the holy city. This is so cool. He that liveth when the Lord shall come. Now here's, this is, we need to focus on this, okay? He that liveth when the Lord shall come and hath kept the faith, blessed is he, Nevertheless, it is appointed to him to die at the age of man. Hmm. Have any of you heard that before? That's pretty interesting. 
So let's read that again. And he that liveth when the Lord shall come and hath kept the faith, blessed is he. Nevertheless, it is appointed to him to die at the age of man. So in the Book of Mormon, the, the three uh, disciples obviously were changed. Their bodies were changed. They, be, they, they were caught up. They were quickened and um, uh, terrestrialized, if you will, and translated, translated beings. John's same situation. The others said, we want to become the age of man and die, and it was 72. Uh, you can look at some other references in Scripture, and it could be around 80 is, is the age of man. So if you're 65... <laughs> and the, the coming of the Son of Man happens, I could be quickened. But then when I hit 72, then I'll, I'll be changed again into a, a resurrected being. I, I'm, that's, that's just what I'm thinking. I'm assuming a lot of things. I'm assuming that he's coming this year, <laughs> or the year of my 65th year. And I'm also assuming that I'm going to be righteous enough that that'll happen. But anyway... But, but that's that's an interesting thing. I don't think I've ever really understood that. I thought maybe it'd be for a thousand years you could live as a terrestrial being, but but apparently not. Wherefore, children shall grow up and, until, I'm in verse 51 now. Wherefore, children shall grow up until they become old. Old men shall die, but they shall not sleep in the dust, but they shall be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Okay, so who are these people and what does it take? Well, let's read. Wherefore, for this cause, preach the apostles unto the world, the resurrection of the dead. These things are the things that ye must look for. And that's kind of like watching for, okay? And speaking after the manner of the Lord, they are now nigh at hand. Hmm, this was in um, 1831. The church is a year old, thereabouts. Okay, nigh at hand. And in the time, and in a time to come, even in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. Okay, now this verse 54 hit me like a ton of bricks just recently. And until that hour, there will be foolish virgins. Until that hour. Until Christ comes, there's going to be foolish virgins. So this isn't about Christ coming. The, the parable of the ten virgins, uh, well, let's just keep reading. And until that hour, the coming of the Son of Man, there will be foolish virgins among the wise. And at that hour cometh an entire separation of the righteous and the wicked. <sighs> and in that day will I send mine angel to pluck out the wicked and cast them in, into unquenchable fire. Now, this is fascinating to me because... When the prophet says time is running out, I think that's what he's, this is what he's referring to. It's prior to the coming of the Son of Man, but it's when Shiz really hits the fan. And um, there'll be an entire separation. And this, the wicked will punish the wicked. This is how this process is, is starting. This is, this is how the chaos and how the separation is starting. Right, in my opinion, and so um, the foolish virgins among the wise, and if you look at the um, the cross reference of that, um, it's Matthew twenty five. It's the parable of the ten virgins. So this clearly states that the parable of the ten virgins will be will happen prior to Christ's second coming, and it will be. Um, the process of a total separation of the wicked from the righteous. Now, in my opinion, this is when Zion 
in the sense of, of a, a, the, a new Jerusalem and a holy city can, can be established. And until then, I don't think it can. There can be a type of a Zion, temples, covenants. Uh, there can be a type of a, a, a new Jerusalem, maybe not the new Jerusalem, but a new Jerusalem with, with temples, covenants, all those things. That's all part of it. Um, we, I think we have to think of Zion the same way we think of the new Jerusalem or a new Jerusalem. It, it can be a place. It can be a, a sense of being. It can be a community. It can be a lot of different things. And I also think it's very important to know where the, the, the first meanings of those words came from. They came from the Old Testament. And that is the first meaning, in my opinion, of Mount Zion, Mount Moriah, uh, um, the New Jerusalem, the Jerusalem, I, and Jerusalem being restored. Those are the first meanings of this. It's like it's like when it says in in uh, Isaiah. Uh, when, you, when we, we go to Isaiah and we always think this is all about us. Um, here it is. This is Isaiah chapter 2 and it's also uh, 2 Nephi chapter 12. And it's almost word perfect. The word of the word of the word that that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem this is what he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the tops of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it and many people shall go and say come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, we, we can liken it unto the latter days in the United States of America, and particularly we can liken it to the restoration, we can liken it to the temple, we can liken it to Salt Lake Temple, the mountain of the house, in the, in the mountains will establish, you know, even though it's in a valley, it's, you know, 4,500 feet above sea level, it's, it's, it's on a, a mountain plain, the Great Basin. But um, we can liken it, but the, the original meaning was concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And in my opinion, this is my opinion, you have all through these Old Testament prophets um, from Isaiah on, you, you have this idea of, of uh, Judah, Jerusalem, or you have Zion and, Jer and, and Jerusalem. As, as, as separate. Well, to me, Zion is the temple, Jerusalem's the city. Okay, that and, that and that makes sense to me. But then you can liken that to us today. We are a type, but the original, the original. So in other words, this isn't a prophecy exclusively about the saints in the latter days. And I'm getting some good sun here. So anyway, I'll probably be wrapping this up, but but let's go through this this in the Doctor and Covenant 60, section sixty three again. And until that hour, um, which was the coming of the Son of Man in the previous verse, there will be foolish virgins among the wise, and at that hour cometh an entire separation of the righteous and the wicked. And in that day will I send mine angels to pluck out wicked and cast them into, into unquenchable fire. This is where the cleansing occurs. So, folks. This is my opinion. We need we need to be on that covenant path. We need to be good to our fellow men 
we really need to, to pay attention to the Holy Scriptures, really need to, to stay laser focused on, on what they, uh, what the ancient prophets and, and what the standard works preach and teach. And we, we cannot be lazy learners. We have to understand this. And we have to understand that the foolish virgins and the parable of the 10 virgins is prior to the wedding. It's prior to the wedding and the separation. And, and it's, the signs are out there. So with this Southern border and all the things, I think this is prophecy being fulfilled. And I think this country in particular is ripe by this country, the United States of America is ripe for destruction, ripe for destruction. Uh, so that's it for this video. I, I hope that was helpful. Um, God bless y'all. You're just amazing folks. It's, 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 it's so um, comforting to be part of such a great community of saints, of saints, of saints. And I thank you. Uh, there'll be more videos coming before the before Christmas, so I'll save save a Christmas message for later. But um, but Merry Christmas, right? We're in that season. Um, having just been to Bethlehem a, a month or so ago, and feeling the spirit there, seeing the shepherds' fields, seeing where where um, Ruth and Boaz had their fields right there. Uh, it really happened. It really happened. God bless. Talk to you soon. Bye.